Hello everyone. We are going to take a look at the topic of redox reactions. This topic will be taught in several parts. So if you like to follow along, I will encourage you to download the worksheet that accompanies all the videos so that you can practice as we go along. So in this video, we shall take a look at a brief overview of what redox reactions are and look at three different ways to define redox reactions. Redox reactions are a very important and very big class of chemical reactions. They are characterized by the transfer of electrons. The term redox comes from two words, reduction and oxidation. And in a redox reaction, there are these two processes that must take place simultaneously. So how I like to explain redox is like you think of yourself doing some charity work. Okay, you are donating money. And on the other end, there must be someone else who is receiving it. Right? You cannot have someone donating money, but there is no one there to receive it. The money cannot just disappear, right? Okay, so we always have someone who is donating, someone that is receiving. So likewise, when it comes to chemical reactions, the currency isn't really money, but the currency is like electrons. Okay, so oxidation basically means the loss of electrons, while reduction refers to the process where electrons are being gained. So a redox reaction basically means these two combine, a transfer of electrons from one species to another. Okay, so you cannot have oxidation without reduction. Both must come together. Now we're going to take a look at some examples of some redox reactions and use different rules to decide what substance is being oxidized and what substance is being reduced. There are four main ways we can look at redox reactions. Okay, and we're going to go through each method one by one. In the first method, we are going to focus on oxygen. Okay, so here I have three different chemical reactions and I have listed the substances that are being oxidized and the substances that are being reduced. Okay, so from zinc, become zinc oxide, from carbon, becoming carbon monoxide, and from carbon monoxide, becoming carbon dioxide. All three of them are being oxidized in this reaction. So based on this, can you come up with a definition of oxidation? So oxidation usually occurs when a substance gains oxygen. In the first equation, zinc is oxidized because it gains oxygen to form zinc oxide. And the second equation, carbon, is oxidized because it gains oxygen to form carbon monoxide. Now let's turn our attention to this column. What happened to the oxygen for this tree? Okay, we see that going from here to here, the oxygen is being lost. So when oxygen is being lost, that substance is being reduced. Looking at the gain and loss of oxygen is a convenient way to decide whether the substance is being oxidized or reduced. So to sum up this section, a substance that gains oxygen is oxidized, while a substance that loses oxygen is being reduced. Let's take a look at an equation below. What do you think is the substance that is being oxidized here? Oxidation is the gain of oxygen. So carbon gains oxygen, so it's being oxidized. What about oxygen here then? It doesn't really lose oxygen, right? It's very hard to tell. So when there are two reactants and one of them is oxidized, the other one must be reduced. Okay, because remember, oxidation and reduction happens simultaneously. Now let's move on to the next definition. If you look at the first equation here, we won't be able to apply what we have learned using oxygen. Because in this equation, there is no oxygen at all. So there is no way to look at oxygen. So we have to use a different definition of what redox means. Here are two examples. Let us focus just on hydrogen. Looking at hydrogen sulfide, 
becomes sulfur and from water becoming oxygen. The hydrogen is being lost. Right? So oxidation refers to the loss of hydrogen. And if you look over on this column, Cl2, chlorine to hydrogen chloride. It seems that the substances have gained hydrogen over here. So reduction is the gain of hydrogen. Okay, so this can be another way we can decide whether a substance is being oxidized or reduced. And just to point out, we don't have to write the substances in any particular order. Uh, it doesn't mean that the one oxidized must always be written first. What is important is whatever is on the left is on the left. The two examples above are quite straightforward. What about this one? The reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia. Nitrogen has gained hydrogen, right? So remember, gain of hydrogen is reduction. Automatically, the other one must be oxidation. Nitrogen is being reduced while hydrogen is being oxidized. Let's take a look at one more. As I've mentioned at the start of the video, every redox reaction involves a transfer of electrons. Okay, but the movement of electrons is a little bit difficult to see, especially when they give you a chemical equation rather than an ionic equation. Okay, but nevertheless, let's take a look at some examples. The reaction between sodium and chlorine to form the ionic compound sodium chloride. Sodium okay, is being oxidized and chlorine is being reduced in this reaction. Because this is an ionic compound, you actually have Na plus and Cl minus. So sodium, the metal, loses electrons, while chlorine, the non-metal, gains electrons. So reduction is the gain of electrons, while oxidation is the loss of electrons. Okay, Because there are two processes that are happening simultaneously, we can break down this chemical equation into two half equations. One half equation shows oxidation and the other one shows reduction. Sodium is being oxidized and when it's oxidized, it becomes sodium ions and sodium loses an electron in the process. Chlorine gains electrons to form chloride. Okay, because in sodium chloride is Cl minus. Of course, in any equation, it must be balanced. So I have Cl2, so let's put a 2 here. And also the charges must balance. I have two negative charge here because 2 Cl minus. And therefore, on the left, I must have two negative charges. So what I've written here is the half equation. Sodium losing electron, so this is oxidation. Chlorine gaining electrons, so this is reduction. So sometimes this may be referred to as ionic equations as well. Whenever possible, we try to add in the state symbols. Okay, over here, I just leave it out because I just want you all to understand how the electrons are moving around. When we have two half equations, it's possible to combine them. When you combine two half equations, the number of electrons must be made the same. So in the second one, I have two electrons. In the first one, I only have one. So I must make the number of electrons the same by multiplying the entire equation by a certain number. Okay? Then, everything on the left, we put on the left. Everything on the right, we put on the right. Okay? So on the left and right, if there are common things, we can cancel them. Then everything else write it down. 2Na plus 2Cl minus is basically 2NaCl. I get back the original equation. One application of redox reaction is in transition lenses. The glass actually contains two different compounds. You have silver chloride and copper 1 chloride. When you walk into the sun, the lens actually darkens. So that is due to the formation of silver atoms. And when you go back into a room, or when there is no more sun, the lens clears up again, okay, it becomes lighter, and because the silver is being removed to form back silver ions. So now I want you to take a look at both equations. Can you identify what is the substance 
reduced and what is the substance being oxidized. Okay, so we have, let's take a look at the copper 1 ion, Cu+. Plus. The copper ion becomes a copper 2 ion by losing an electron. And the silver ion gains an electron to form silver. The copper 1 ion is being oxidized and the silver ion is being reduced. In the bottom equation, the copper 2 ion is being reduced as it gains electron while the silver atom is being oxidized as it loses electron. So in this video, we have seen three ways of defining what oxidation and reduction means. Consolidate what we have learned and fill in the table below. So we see that when a substance gains oxygen, it is oxidized and a substance loses oxygen is reduced. When a substance loses hydrogen is oxidized. When a substance gains hydrogen, it is reduced. When a substance loses electrons, it is oxidized. And when a substance gains electrons, it is reduced. Alright, so I hope you can remember these rules. You notice there's one more row here. We'll take a look at the idea of oxidation state in the next video. Thanks for watching.